What's it like being autistic? The answer to that question is going to change a lot depending on the autistic person you ask, but I'm happy to share my experience with you this week. Part of my own autistic experience is not knowing that I was autistic for the first 29 years of my life because I was not diagnosed until I was 29. Other autistic people who may have found out they were autistic earlier in life are likely to have a very different experience than I did. However, one thing that I feel I relate to with a lot of autistic people, regardless of with whether they were discovered earlier in life or later in life, is feeling this intense pressure from society to be a certain way and act a certain way and fit myself into certain standards and norms that often felt completely out of reach for me. Though I did not grow up with the autism label and the associated stigma of that label, I still had an autistic experience of life, even without having the language to describe that autistic experience. My strengths often were used as reasons to deny my struggles. Often I struggled with things that people around me took for granted as simple. I was lonely a lot throughout my life. Throughout most of my life and my school years, I did not have the ability to read people's nonverbal signals. I didn't know when people were uninterested in me or did not like me. If people said nice things to me, I assumed there were always nice intentions behind them. I didn't really know people beyond what their words were. When I was in workplaces and I would have to go to networking events, I still could not read a group of people to see if they were receptive to having me walk up to them and introduce myself. And I kept being told, just go up and start talking to people. And I couldn't read the room or the signal. And so I would go up and start talking to people who didn't even want to talk or weren't receptive to me talking to them. This has flared social anxiety in me. I have developed social anxiety throughout my life as an autistic person because of repeated social miscommunications, misunderstandings, and social failures because I struggle to read the room and read people and understand people's intentions. And it has made me so wary of being around and developing new relationships with other people that I almost don't even want to try it anymore. When I found out I was autistic, I developed a very strong interest in human communication. I've always had an interest in writing and sharing information. However, I struggle with getting that information out when I am face to face with another person or in a more relaxed, less structured conversational setting. For example, I do very well putting these videos out into the internet. I get to dump all of the information out there. There is no wondering about, is it my turn to talk? Is it your turn to talk? Whose turn to talk is it? Has there been enough time? All of these questions that are in my head when I'm trying to figure out how to talk with another person next to me. I'm always talking over people and I don't even mean to do it. I don't even realize I'm doing it. I interrupt people. I, I don't know how to people and I don't people very much. I am very reclusive. I hang out with a very, very small select group of people outside of the blog and the internet. I am 
someone who has social anxiety. And so I am doing work and putting out content and teaching, and that is a very professional modality for me. Whereas if we're going to go do socializing and do something casual with no plan, no outline, no rules of engagement, that makes my head spin. I do, however, like to go and engage in my interests around people when I would go to circus practice and do hoop and flow arts and all of those things. And when I would go to yoga, I would go and do the activity next to other people doing the same activity. I could go be around people as we were collaborating on projects, but that was because we had a specific focus and a specific task we were doing. But if you remove the task and say, we're just going to happy hour, then I don't, I don't know what to do with that because I struggle when you get so many people together in a room. When is it my turn to talk? Everybody's constantly talking. I feel like I get lost in large groups, especially around people that I'm not comfortable with. And there aren't that many people I'm comfortable around these days. My partner and I live in an RV. We are trying to stay away from people for the most part. We don't people very much. That is lifestyle uh, by design. We are in our own little bubble, our own little world. That's the way I like things. There is a saying that you can be lonely in a room of people. And also I feel you can be fully fulfilled even when you are alone. I am filled by my interests and enjoy solitude. In fact, it is rare for me to enjoy a person's company more than I enjoy my own company and the company of myself alone engaging in one of my special interests, hobbies, or passions. You have to be pretty special for me to like you more than I like being alone or like you enough to invite you into my solitude because that is my happy place. That's why my circle is so incredibly small. That and the fact that I struggle to read and figure out people's intentions and I know that that means I am very vulnerable when letting people in to my bubble and starting new relationships. So I'm not particularly interested in having a lot of people in my life. That is just not something I crave. When I was lonely growing up and for most of my life, because I thought people would fill a void in me that I have now filled with, with myself, with, with my passions, with my hobbies, with, with other things that people weren't going to be able to do for me anyway. Another part of my personal autistic experience is having very intense passions and interests. Sometimes my interests and passions are so intense that they get in the way of me doing other things that I want to do or my relationships with other people because I'm trying to focus on one thing, but my mind is over here focusing on the other thing that is my passion when I need to focus elsewhere. Or my passion becomes so hyper-focused on the one thing that it is as if the rest of the world almost ceases to exist and time slows down and changes in my head. And I may not realize that I have been engaging in my passion for many, many hours a day all the while ignoring other things in my life that are important, such as people, bodily needs, like eating and going to the bathroom, or taking care of adulting and other responsibilities because I am too busy engaging in my passions instead of doing the things I'm supposed to be doing in my life. Yes, this passion can get in the way of things. It's also I can be so passionate that I really do learn some really awesome stuff. This passion, though sometimes described as a big weakness of autistic people, in my case also can be my biggest strength because I 
get so focused on something that I cannot let it go. It causes me to learn and solve problems because I get stuck on things. A very big part of my own personal autistic experience is dealing with a lot of sensory issues and sensory processing difficulties. Certain types of lighting can give me migraines. Vertigo can cause me to get disoriented and with enough continued exposure cause me to have seizures. Being autistic means many of us have sensory processing and motor control differences. The sense of balance and where your body is in space are senses that can be impacted. In my case, it means I am always bruising myself. Oh, there's the bruise. <laughs> Walking into doors, slamming my hands and arms onto things. And I have really, really, really poor handwriting and it physically hurts my hands to write with a pencil. I've been obsessed with these little balls because I am trying to improve my motor control. My hands are becoming even more shaky as I age, which is really kind of a scary thought to think that my control and dexterity of my fingers, which has never been particularly great, might even be getting worse. Luckily for me, I really do enjoy playing with these glowy, shiny balls, watching the light reflect off the inside of them as I spin them around. It's very fun and soothing and it's just a great way to stim with my hands. Hopefully as I build muscle memory I will see other benefits as well. Only time will tell on that one. Contact juggling is quickly becoming one of my biggest passions which is great because sometimes for me I find that it is the little things that other people take for granted that bring me the most joy. So what's it like being autistic? Quick recap, I spend a lot of time on my own, engaging in my special interests, away from the world, being a recluse, and sticking to the same routine, eating the same things, doing the same things. Some people might say my life is a little bit boring, as I spend all my time in nature, avoiding society, and not going out and doing the things that a lot of people think are important, but it works for me and it is a style of life that gives me joy. What is your autistic experience like? What is it like being autistic for you? Because each and every single autistic person, as I always say, will have a different experience of what autism and being autistic means to them. I invite you, other autistics, to drop your experience of autistic life in the comments below. Super huge thank you to everyone who is still here today. You stayed through the entire video. That's awesome. I'm so grateful for your time. If you found this video helpful and you haven't yet followed or subscribed, please be sure to do so so you don't miss a video because I put out new long format videos like this each and every single Wednesday. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button so I know that you found it useful. Consider sharing because hopefully someone else will find it useful too. I am grateful for each and every one of you spending your time with me, dropping your comments and video suggestions, asking questions, and those of you who also subscribe monetarily on Facebook, uh, YouTube channel members, or on Patreon, a huge thank you for those of you who do that. This blog is made possible thanks to the support and only because of viewers like you. I literally could not do this without you, so thanks to each and every single one of you. If you subscribe on Patreon, I believe that is the most affordable way to subscribe. It is a pay what you can subscription starting at only $1 a month, less if you subscribe annually. I put out videos like this one early. It is currently March 14th when I'm shooting this and will share it with Patreon likely later today. This won't be coming out till almost the end of May, so you'll get this video more than two months early. Just as a little thanks uh, for helping me create this content. Thank you to everyone, whether you are sharing, commenting, subscribing monetarily, you are all a part of what makes this blog possible and I couldn't do it without you. I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.